Hi, and welcome to H-U-R at Home on our road to 50. I'm your host, Angela Stribling, and yeah, I'm kind of out and about, and I've been so excited about this day. And so let's just bring everybody in. Let's see, who do I want to start with? How about Vicki Saunders? Steve <laughs> Robinson. Oh, my Hi, God. Hi, Angela. Hi, Vicki. You're looking so beautiful. I'm so happy Thank that you're you. here. Oh my gosh, we've got <laughs> Sheila Eldridge joining us tonight and Brittany Riddle. This is WHUR family. Hi, look, it's so good. You know what? As we do this Road to 50, we had to bring all of you on. And we just want to, I guess, take a walk down memory lane and talk about your stories, how you started with WHUR, uh, anything interesting along the way that stands out, any stories that you want to share. And Steve, if I'm not mistaken, you started out as an intern and now you're the deputy general manager of the radio station. Absolutely. Right? It's, it's a funny story. Um, I wasn't even in the School of Communication or majoring in radio and that's around it. Fell in love with radio, working at WHBP, our student station, and interned at WHUR. And as you said, I'm I'm the WHUR manager now. Um, Brittany, who's on with us, uh, Sheila, who's on with us. We were all interns at some point at WHUR. That's really funny. I mean, you know, a lot of people maybe sleep on just how far interns can go and just how important it is. And that is something that WHUR has always taken great pride in, uh, taking the students very seriously and making sure that they learn the ropes. And uh, Dr. Vicki Saunders, <laughs> Professor <laughs> Vicki Saunders, rather, you, you know, you work a lot with with students and you know working with a lot of the radio stations there at WHUR. Talk about that and talk about uh, that whole journey and what it means to you. Well what I want to say being a native Washingtonian um, I was about 13 or 14 I don't know when WHUR came on the air and it filled my life so much. I mean it was must-see TV. If you missed a night and someone said, didn't you hear the song they played? And you didn't, I felt so lost. WHUR was a big part of my life. Um, I traveled around the country with my family, with the National Dental Association, and met all kinds of young black people, and none of them had WHUR. None of them could understand what I was saying, and I felt so sorry for them. I was so sad they wouldn't know what I knew. WHUR, um, a lot of people have tried to explain it, and it's, you can't describe it in a physical way. It's an organic mixture of the music, the politics, and the social interaction that it brings to the community. And WHUR just made me feel good about myself. It made Black people feel good about themselves. And I'm so glad. I don't even know what my life would be without it. I, I, I never thought about working. WHUR working in radio, yet I did at Spelman and at Clark. And um, I feel so great to now uh, be the director of multicast department, which is part of the expansion of that consciousness to the world. Because now everybody can listen to some part of WHUR all over the world. And I'm so happy for that because that was my major concern at 14, that everybody didn't have WHUR. <laughs> Something I love that, and okay, so Brittany Riddle, you're an integral part of WHUR and the family. Talk about your journey. Yes, yeah, so actually, I came um, to DC from Atlanta, Georgia. I started at Howard, and when I became an intern at WHUR, Vicky was my professor. And Steve was my general manager at the student radio station WHBC. So now to come back years later, everything is full circle. Um, and just to learn from them, I think one of the first assignments I had as an intern was to produce one of Steve's shows at the time. So just learning like the behind the scenes and the technical aspect and to actually be an intern, but to be treated with such respect and such dignity as a student, that was really important to me. And it made me become the professional that I am today. And it's also great that we still have so many wonderful interns who come from 
both student radio stations, WHBC and Glasshouse Radio, and they get to learn from all these professionals who are not on, the, on this video now, but without the station and throughout our history. So it's just amazing to see like the progress and how integral WHUR has been in my life, both personally and professionally. Yeah, I love it. And Sheila Eldridge, we've been friends for so long as well. In fact, you're all my good friends. Sheila, you go way back with WHUR. Talk about your journey. I go way back. I think that HUR had only been on about five years. Okay, I'm dating myself now. Yep, five years. And we were in a trailer and right behind the football field uh, at Howard. And it was very, just this two trailers there. Um, and, but we got so, I started as an intern and I was in the music library. I was a librarian. At that time we had vinyl, okay? That's going way back. <laughs> and, um, but the experience, the relationships and that I made from just being in the library and being in and around WHUR has lasted a lifetime. Um, I, and I didn't really realize the impact of the station until I left Washington, because I'm a native, you know, Washingtonian as well. And I moved to California. And when I got to L.A., everybody was like, you were at H.U.R.? You were at H.U.R.? You know, um, and I, I always say there are only five legendary black owned at that time radio stations in the country. It was H.U.R., it was WBLS. It was KJLH, WDAS in Chicago. And in the South, it was the Big DM. All of those stations were at that time, this is like, what, 30 years better ago? They were all minority owned. And we still mm -hmm. now only have two that are owned, that are minority owned, black owned. And that is WHUR and KJLH. So that just will tell you the impact and the significance of, you know, the whole WHUR network and everything. So it's just been, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for HUR, I'll tell you. I love that you said, you know, when you moved away, that's when you realized, I guess, the power of, of WHUR. Anyone else want to share that, you know, when it really hit them, just uh, how powerful and how meaningful in the community WHUR is? Absolutely, uh, Angela. I think when I realized was probably the first time I did um, our alternative spring break, you know, and for those radiothons that we do, you know, it's it's really about the, the support of our, our listeners. You know, we we have some of the best listeners in the world and they always show up and show out for us. And I was, um, God rest his soul, I was board hopping for Patrick Ellis shift on um, alternative spring break. And um, just to just to see the the impact of our listenership and the just digging deep into their pockets to send these Howard University students across country and across the globe to to help other, you know, um, other areas of the country and the globe for whatever reason, um, from everything from like literacy to um, you know, impacts from natural disasters to um, helping, you know, people in poverty, to, to be able to see what type of reach people like Patrick had, people like, you know, um, Jackie Gales Webb on that day, um, and so on and so forth, to see the reach that they had, not just to our community, but people were calling in from uh, across the country, you know, making donations. That, that's when it really hit me how much WHUR meant to not just us in the you know DC metropolitan area, but to people across the country and across the globe. Anyone else? The piggyback on what Sheila and Steve said, it, uh, Sheila was telling you, and I lived in LA as well, KJLH and WHUR, WHUR, you don't last this long because you've been doing things wrong. There is something that is working and it's almost, it's not that there is no effort by all of the people who work there, but there is also something that is 
sort of magical that makes me so happy to work at WHUR. You cannot beat WHUR down. It's never going down. And I just love knowing that and being in that, that no matter what happens, WHUR is going to be here. So, it, you know, that that's how I recognize radio stations come and go. WHUR does it. Yeah, it's funny that you say that. I mean, you know, like all of you, I mean, I've worked at various radio stations and it's a whole different thing. I mean, HUR is kind of, I mean, yes, it is a radio station, but it's so much more. It's a heritage station. It's so big in the community. I remember before I worked at WHUR, it was, you know, to me, just the biggest station ever. And, you know, when I finally joined the HUR family, I got it. I got it instantly because, you know, people feel it. It's it's it doesn't matter what's going on around us. HUR isn't, you know, it's it's always going up. It's always going to be the most important radio station. And in no matter what city that you're in, you know, even with the Quiet Storm, you know, you all know my history with Melvin Lindsay. He was my best friend. And when I first came to DC and I met Melvin, oh my God, <laughs> I was just blown away. I mean, just, uh, you know, he was so good looking and so smooth, but he was just a phenomenon, you know, early in his career. And, uh, you know, so I used to listen to WHUR constantly. And, uh, you know, then to, to actually be a part of the family just meant everything because of the listeners. We've got, it's, it's a unique relationship, I think, that we have with the listeners. Would you agree? Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that, um, you know, much like has, I think Vicky said it first, you know, to everybody has a, a WHUR here in the, the DC metropolitan area and they, they own it. You know, you can't, we get calls all the time, you know, when, when um, something changes at the radio station, when, um, you know, if you don't hear a specific voice, I remember we were, um, we had changed uh, Lorna Newton's shift on world at one time from, from like three to seven, she was doing afternoons and we moved her to midday and the calls, like, you know, it, nonstop emails, where's Lorna? We want Lorna. It was just like, oh my gosh, you know, and this this is a, a HD2 signal that people are listening majority of the time on, on their computers, you know, and on the app. And to to see that that type of impact, like people, people own this station. It's it's literally like the people's station, you know. Um, and I, I think that's that's something that's that's unheard of, of course. And Growing up in New Jersey with you know New York radio, I loved it. I felt it, but the the feeling that you get from WHUR is just different. It it is completely different. It's electric, you know. It's it's captivating. It's there's no place like like WHUR, and to be able to celebrate 50 years in December that's that's unheard of as well. Sheila, Sheila, can you give us an idea of just you know? Back in the day when you were with WHUR and here you are now, you know, in business, you're like a mogul and just really doing so well. Just how WHUR has helped you in that path. Um, well, it's I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for WHUR. I mean, I love radio and to be able to do business and have a relationship with the station that I came up on is just a blessing. Um, you know, so I always say, I, you know, things come full circle. You know, when I was at HUR, we called uh, Patrick Ellis. He was Brother Patrick. OK. And uh, Jim Watkins was the engineer. He wasn't the general manager. Um, and then as I grew uh, in my business, um, when I needed an opportunity, I went to Jim. And he said to me, he said, if you can prove to me that you're serious about this and you can do this, I'm going to give you an opportunity. And this was 20 years later from when I was in school that he gave me an opportunity. And, you know, and Patrick and I would get together and we'd go and he would just talk to me about, you know, people and just how you have to over take care of people and look out for people. He was such a Oh, it was such an inspiration to so many people, you know, so I would I would not be here. I mean, I love HUR like it's family for me, you know, because it is family. And I wanted to just say, too, that the artists love HUR. 
because when I was there, nobody was breaking music. Nobody was breaking new artists like HUR. I mean, Earth, Wind and Fire, Frankie Beverly and Mays. Um, I mean, just it was just artists that they got their start. Gil Scott Heron, nobody was playing him, you know? Um, and so they have an affection and love for HUR too. And when I went to California, you know, the artists were all excited about, oh yeah, you know, HUR, we love, you know. So um, I, I just, it's just an affection. And I don't think people really understand how unique HUR is. You don't have stations, you know, like Steven said, that are around 50 years. You don't have stations that they, you know, they keep, people have been with them for 20 and 30. That doesn't happen in this industry. Um, people, you know, grow new talent. That doesn't happen in this industry. Um, so it's a special place. I love it. And Brittany, you know, we're talking about this heritage station that's been around for so long. And you're young and you are very involved in the radio station and you listen to the radio station. Can you talk about what it means to you and your generation and, you know, your whole you know, what you feel about WHUR on this road to 50? So for one, I'm still amazed that we're on the road to 50 because <laughs> it's just amazing to me. Like I was just thinking about something Steve said about our impact in the community. And I remember when I first started working here, I wore a WHUR t-shirt in a grocery store. And this woman comes up to me in the line and she says, you work at WHUR, you know, the people, you know, Lorna and these people, Patrick. And I'm like, Yes. And I was a little afraid, but she said, I grew up listening to the station. I'm a native Washingtonian. So I think that was one of the moments I said, I am a part of something special. And, you know, even though I am, you know, one of the younger staff members being a millennial, it's just amazing to see how much hard work and dedication can take you so far. I mean, just being here, you know, even when I left WHUR full time and I was able to come back, Everything that I've learned here, all the experiences, the, you know, working with Vicki and Sheila and Steve and all of our other colleagues and you, Angela, I'm able to take that in other places and use those experiences everywhere. So it's just amazing to be a part of something that's so unique, but something that's continuing to grow and still thrive 50 years later. So that's just amazing to me. And I just feel very blessed to have been a part of this uh WHUR. Is there anything that has surprised anyone about the radio station or maybe about our listeners? Any stories that, that you can share? <laughs> Is that a I, trick question? Just, yeah. <laughs> no, no. I, don't think, yeah. um, I just want to say something that Steve and uh, Sheila were saying. Uh, Steve was saying that the people, you, the people in DC feel like they own WHUR, that WHUR belongs to them. And even though I was one of those people and felt that same way, I didn't know I felt that way until I was on the other side. And I could see myself in the people who listened. I thought, I work at WHUR now, but I thought it was mine when I didn't even know where it was located. I knew it was on Howard's campus. I didn't know it was in a trailer when I was 14. I didn't know where it was and I didn't need to know, but it still was mine. And it belongs to the people. And at WHUR, the work environment is different because I feel like for everybody's job, no matter what it is, the station comes before I do. It comes before everybody who works there. And that is a very special environment. It's the mission and the purpose of WHUR that comes before the actual individual person working there. And that's very important because somehow subconsciously we realize this belongs to the people, not us. It belongs to our listeners and the community. And that's what surprised me to see from that side what I couldn't see when I was a listener. Yeah, I love it. Anyone want to expand on that? I totally agree with that. I, I did want to go back to a, a, a point um, Sheila made earlier about um, growing talent, you know, and doing things kind of out of the box, you know, with with WHUR, it, it's a 
it's a trend setting station. You know, it, it's not, it doesn't conform. It doesn't, you know, follow the, the quote unquote status quo of radio stations, you know, as, as she stated about breaking artists, you know, um, being able to create. And that was one thing for, I, I know I could speak for myself and Brittany and um, Vicky as, as our, our director, you know, at the time we were able to create things, um, radio specials, you know, that, that, historically WHUR was known for creating. When we started, we were able to create radio specials on WHUR World, you know, celebrating the likes of, you know, Michael Jackson and, um, you know, Marvin Gaye and celebrating, you know, I, I know Britney worked specifically on a, a radio documentary about, you know, 50 years of SNCC and the, the list goes on and on. You know, we had the freedom to be able to think outside of the box and we were encouraged to do it by you know people like a Jim Watkins, by you know like even now by our our current general manager Sean Plater, it's it's always forward thinking. It's always setting the trend, not following it. You know, and I think that's what really separates WHUR from any other radio station on this planet. It allows people to be free thinkers. It allows people to be creative, and it allows us to continue to you know set trends that much like the, the likes of the quiet storm. You know, they, they try to duplicate the quiet storm across the country, across the globe. We are the home of the original quiet storm, you know, and, and you, can't, you can't take that away from, from WHUR no matter how hard people try. No question about it, and they do try. <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned the quiet storm. I find myself educating so many people. They think, oh, it started at uh, WBLS in New York, no? No, it did not. It started here. They started playing it soon after. Uh, Vaughn Harper was friends with Melvin Lindsay. And when Melvin started it, Vaughn, you know, loved it and started playing it. They started playing it in Philadelphia, the West Coast. It just, you know, it was a phenomenon that started right there at WHUR. You know, it's so funny. I love these conversations that we that we have about WHUR. And Vicki, you were so right. I mean, we all kind of feel like it's our station and the vibe behind the scenes at WHUR. We are a family and it is very service oriented. And, you know, I, I, I feel that our listeners know that we put them first because we really do appreciate and cherish them. And we know that, you know, we're kind of in this whole thing together. Um, you know, food to feed, that's something that I always look forward to every year and you know we were talking about things that that we do in the community uh, what do you think about something like that i mean food to feed i don't know how long that tradition how long ago it started but i remember mary and barry would always make it as business to be there you know and you know all the politicians would show up everybody in dc who's anybody would come and and just be a part of it it's just one of the wonderful things that WHUR does. Well, um, I, I know before it was food to feed, if I'm not mistaken, it was known as Project Harvest. And, um, you know, we there was a kind of like a, a low period. And, you know, again, um, individuals like, you know, a Patrick Ellis and um, a Renee Nash and, you know, the, the likes of them got together and were just like, you know, we we need to continue this type of philanthropic effort for our listeners, you know, and the next thing you know, uh, the, the title of Food to Feed is born. And I, I know for for the likes of, of myself and Brittany, those those were almost, you know, like 24 hour days, you know, that we would be out there the night before at uh, the old post office pavilion, setting up and um, getting ready for a 12 hour radiothon and broadcast, but you knew no matter how tired you got, no matter you know how restless that the, the day became, you were doing something that was impacting an entire community. You know, um, and again, that's, that's what makes this place special, to be able to utilize the power of the airwaves, to be able to utilize the, um, you know, a, a station like a WHUR to impact your community that's that's one of the things that that really gets me up every day and excited about being in radio to be able to you know um, be a voice for your community to be able to utilize your platform to 
you know, speak for individuals and, and have forums and platforms and conversations that are not taking place everywhere, you know, um, to be able to, to touch the community, you know, through those philanthropic efforts. You know, we, we actually, we actually have one coming up this, this Saturday where it's our, our annual coat drive, you know, where we're going to roll up our sleeves and, and get on the air and, and try to, you know, collect as many coats for, you know, area children that we can, you know, and it's because of our listeners that we're able to do these type of philanthropic efforts, but it's because of stations like WHUR that realize that the community is everything. I tell people all the time, I, we wouldn't we wouldn't be where we are without our listeners. We wouldn't be where we are without the the DC community. You know, we wouldn't be turning fifty soon without our 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 audience. And and they they are the secret sauce and the backbone of everything that we do. Love, the love is real. I mean, yeah. when if someone were to ask me, what am I the most proud of when it comes to WHUR, and it is that. It is that we genuinely do care about the community, even when it's a, a remote and one of the personalities, you know, will go out in the community and it's a, you know, paid situation. We're at a store or whatever. It's really about connecting with the listeners, wanting them to come out and, and just meet them, you know, when we're out like tonight. I see that I'm getting a lot of birthday love in the comments and thank you. Yes, I, I'm celebrating my birthday, which is why <laughs> I look blue right now. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm out and I'm, you know, just happy to be here. But here I am at the city winery and so many people keep shouting me out. They're like, isn't that Angela Stribling, W-H-U-R? They say my name and W-H-U-R all in the same sentence. <laughs> so even when, you know, I'm not here hosting something, W-H-U-R is very well represented. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to say piggyback on what you said and what Steve said of how we wouldn't be who we we are without the community. And I feel like everybody who works with or at WHUR really understands how valuable the trust and the respect that the community have for us. And we want to continue to be to to honor that. That's really important for an institution to be trusted and respected by individuals. That is so rare. And I think we all feel that. And um, all as representatives of WHUR, there's nothing we would ever do to mess that up. That is so valuable. That's one of the most valuable things that, that the community has given us and that's their trust and respect. I think that's really important. Such a beautiful thing. So you know, we're getting ready to close out the conversation. And I just want you all to know, I so appreciate you taking the time and sharing your stories, you know, because people don't get to see you that much. They they feel you because you guys are running things in the background and keeping the radio station, you know, going. But I so appreciate just seeing your faces and, and you know, just hearing, hearing your stories. Before we go, is there anything else that we haven't covered, you know, that you'd like to personally say about WHUR? Sheila? Yes. I just like to say that, you know, every great business, every great entity has a culture. And the culture of HUR has always been to cultivate people, to grow internally and externally, the community, the listeners, the talent, um, you know, talent. And, and that is so rare. And I would just like to thank the and Howard for, I mean, here you have a university that owns a very successful commercial radio station. That is not, that's not normal. That's unheard of. So we want to thank Howard University for seeing how important this vision is and how important HUR is to the community and to everyone that it serves um, because it really is. So just from all of us, you know, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you all do, you know, and Angela, happy birthday. You've been at HUR how many years? Okay. You've a been lot. <laughs> many, many you know, years. And we love you, you know, and then you've got this you network know. that goes beyond with Sirius XM. I mean, this is very special. So, you know, happy birthday, WHUR. Yes. Um, 
Thank you for saying that because I want everybody to know we are WHUR. We are the Howard University Radio Network with six channels. Now that's important. And and what Steve said, what we've done and the channels we've uh, created, no one has ever done this at all. We are the Howard University Radio Network, WHUR. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. And Steve and Brittany, we'd love for you to shout out as well before we go. Um, well, first, again, happy birthday, Angela. Thank you. Uh, we are celebrating in spirit with you. But I also want to thank all of our listeners. Um, without them, we would not be here. They listen to us. They give to the, our community efforts, our, our food to feed, our coat drives, our children's toy drive, our alternative spring breaks. So, you know, even the people who are watching now, just thank you to all of you who've been listening for all these 50 years and for the next 50 years to come, you know, you are a part of the WHUR family. So we love and value you as well. Yeah, I, I, I echo everyone's um, sentiments about, you know, WHUR from, from the, the love and the, the support of Howard University, you know, um, the motto of truth and service. We, we follow that to the letter, to the T, um, to all of the, the WHUR employees, you know, um, past, present, and even, even the future. You know, I, I think Tony said it last week when he was on with you, you know, when your family, your family for life, you know, um, you could go anywhere and do anything. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm always inspired by, you know, people like Brittany, like Vicky, like you, Angela, like Sheila, to be able to see the things that you guys have, have gone off and done on, in your personal life and in your personal journeys. It's a part of the, the culture that is WHUR. You know, we celebrate everybody's triumphs when, you know, whenever Sheila calls us about something that's going on in, in, in her endeavors, we celebrate it. We, we promote it. We're a part of it because she is family. You know, she, she will always be family. Everybody that Tony and George, they will always be, be family. You know, um, the, the people that have built this place from the ground up always be family. And I, I just, you know, I would be again, remiss to, to not be able to mention the, the likes of, you know, uh, a Patrick Ellis or a, a Melvin Lindsay, or, you know, um, even people behind the scenes like a, a Lorette Davis or, a, you know, a, um, a John Thomas, who people may not know these names, but these individuals, they they bled for WHUR, you know, and unfortunately they won't be here to celebrate with us in December, but they're, I know they're celebrating and smiling down on us in spirit, you know. Well, this is just beautiful. I so appreciate it. And you're right. I mean, I share the sentiments of what everyone said here tonight. And we are a family and I'm so proud to be a family member of WHUR. And we have the best listeners ever. <laughs> So we're going to keep doing this. We're going to talk to uh, more WHUR family members, past and present, uh, everyone who is, you know, in the tapestry of WHUR. So uh, we'll keep doing this on Thursday nights. So uh, I love this edition. Thank you guys so much. And, you know, thanks for putting up with me here. <laughs> I am very blue. I'm under this blue light. This was We appreciate you letting us be a part of your birthday celebration. Yay. And happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, thank you so much. All right, well, everyone, follow us at WHURFM as we celebrate this road to 50. Have a great night. Thank you.